I have a few new finds to share with you guys in Antarctica today. And a revelation that science has now confirmed something we already knew. It's a scripture from the Bible. And they'll never admit that this is what it means. But when you hear their words, and then you read the word of God, I don't know how anybody could look at the two things and not see the correlation. Now, recently there have been some stories about these bizarre particles that science can't explain coming out of the ice under Antarctica. Well, in the article, they reveal something about these particles that's very specific. The book of John, first chapter, verses 1 through 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now, remember that part of the scripture. Now, let me show you what a scientist in Antarctica was quoted as saying from this article from the Scientific American. This is actually 29 September 2018. Bizarre particles keep flying out of Antarctica's ice and they might shatter modern physics. Since March 2016, researchers have been puzzling over two events in Antarctica where cosmic rays did burst out of the Earth out from the Earth, and were detected by NASA's Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna. It's a balloon-borne antenna drifting over the southern continent. Now, wait until you read this. Anita is designed to hunt cosmic rays from outer space, so the high-energy neutrino community was buzzing with excitement when the ins instrument detected particles that seemed to be blasting up from Earth instead of zooming down from space, because cosmic rays shouldn't do that. Scientists began to wonder whether these mysterious beams are made of particles never seen before. Since then, physicists have proposed all sorts of explanations for these upward-going cosmic rays, from sterile neutrinos to atypical dark matter distributions inside the Earth, referencing the mysterious form of matter that doesn't interact with light. Mysterious form of matter that doesn't interact with light. In him was life, and life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Confirmed. The Holy Bible. Anyway, I thought you guys might enjoy that, seeing scripture literally match up with modern science in a way where they're saying, we have no idea what this is. Any Christian would look at that and go, oh yeah, that's Christianity 101. The darkness comprehended it not. One of the things that I have wanted to talk about for a while in Antarctica has to do with the age of exploration. Now, I know a lot of people don't really correlate the 15th and 16th centuries in Europe with Antarctica. We've shown a lot of correlations for there being events down there. But the idea that I'm going for is this. We know more about Antarctica, the fifth largest continent on the planet, than the Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, English, then Dutch combined, knew about the New World when they started building these massive ships and started sailing them over the horizon by the hundreds. The New World was just not that well known. The Caribbean was, the east coast of Florida was, to the north of that to some extent, South America but we know they knew very little about what they were actually getting into. In fact, one of the uh, 
expeditions came back to Spain saying that the New World was just impassable. And it was rife with savages and just not uh, profitable for exploration. That was one of Ferdinand's explorers. At this time, building these vessels were the result of communal efforts of entire towns for months on end. They would have been the most priceless thing, these ships. And then to watch them just sail over the horizon and then start another one. And do that over and over and over and over again. And many didn't come back. To do this without modern technology, to do this with modern technology, is a huge undertaking. Just to do the ropes and rigging alone. The production of the ropes is one thing, but then the engineering, the drawings, the the layout of all this kind of stuff would have been an incredible, incredible undertaking. Now, but it was lucrative. Incredibly lucrative. In fact, the Spanish controlled it for many hundreds of years. In fact, their last interest in North America, it was like 19, 1898 or 1908 when they finally let their last holding go in North America. But let me show you what I found. We have um, many times talked about this idea of Toth and a bird and birds. We've shown so many in Antarctica. I'm not going to review all of them, but I found another one. And it's in the Mertz Nenis Valley. Now, I don't... People talk about pareidolia and apophenia all day long. The chances of this happening as many times as it has is infinitesimally small. That a shadow could not only show the head of a bird here, but at the place where the beak would be for the shadow to change color to orange and reddish, like you would see in a bird, and to then darken where there would be an eye, this is very, very clearly some creation being made on the ice. And this looks almost exactly like every representation of Toth that I've ever seen. And once again, this is the same location, generally speaking, that we found the simian face, the, the profile face, the Stargate. I believe at least three of the dragons of the five that we found are here in Mertz Ninnis. That's M-E-R-T-Z dash N-I-N-N-I-S for those of you that are looking for the Mertz Ninnis Valley in Antarctica. I will, of course, give you this location, but all around here, there is evidence everywhere of activity, and you can see it. It's This isn't random, what's going on here. And there's three locations here pretty close together. I wanted to show you this. Because we have some statue, somebody standing in between two larger stones. It was very reminiscent of the, the Outlander thing that we covered yesterday. I don't know what this is, but I know it's not natural. It's not something that would just occur as a result of wind blowing over snow and rocks. It's pretty clear that in this region, there is a settlement of some kind. There is activity. And as you can see, it's really close. Like, here's the bird head, and then here's that. And then, not farther, not too far away, this almost looks like this, a small town. It, it very much does. When you look at the spires... And you look at the layout, it looks like there's a series of buildings here. And when you look very close, you can see where they have taken advantage of 
the uh, the shape of the ice here to create some type of a leeward area, perhaps out of the wind, perhaps. And I and you see this always this reddish, this um, orange, yellow that looks like burning fires. I mean, the level of technology, we don't know. I noticed something down here, too, that I thought was very odd. Do you see this perfect white line doing this 90-degree deal here? And then another one here, kind of more faint. You'll never convince me that that's just a product of natural... Even, even camera trick wouldn't do this. And, I mean, how many discoveries are we on now? I have lost track. I really have. It's begun to... Uh, I, I went on a tear for quite a while. I wasn't doing a very good job of organizing. I was just finding things, labeling them, and just going, and not really doing it in an organized way. And I have a huge file full of stuff. All with, of course, coordinates to go back through and, and show. But, you know, I did the end-of-the-year video and tried to pick out the top 50 or so. And I looked, and it didn't even scratch the surface. When you look through down here with an open-minded, critical eye, you will see all sorts of things that do not make sense for an, quote-unquote, uninhabited region. Which is what their allegation down here is that it's uninhabited, no na native inhabitants. Let science explain this head and the other 150 things. And maybe I'll be convinced, but given that they just confirmed a Bible scripture, I think they might want to take a step back. Like, share, subscribe.